when you talk about different perspectives, Peter Melman, remember Peter Melman we, in, in the playoffs last year? This is the guy who used to write for Seinfeld. This is the guy who used to be a sports writer and a sports TV producer. Has kind of a, a, a skewed look at the world. Who better to talk to David Stern about the significance of his 25 years as commissioner of the NBA, okay. but Peter Melman, watch this. David Stern is considered to be the most innovative and astute commissioner in the history of professional sports. I think of him that way, and so do a lot of people I know. He certainly has the highest profile of all commissioners. In fact, his profile is actually so high that, you know, from the side you can't even see the top of his head. Yet one has to wonder, how does a man with a four-inch vertical leap reach the absolute pinnacle of the basketball world? You're not exactly the target audience of your own league, are you? Correct. It's a big mystery. Sure, he's hardworking. He's very smart. Yet, you know how he really got to be the commissioner? It's all about his handwriting. Look at this. Look at that signature on the ball. Clean, legible, no crossouts. In 1983, when the league needed a new commissioner, Red Auerbach said, how about David Stern? I don't know what he knows about basketball, but he's got beautiful penmanship. Over on the West Coast, Dr. Jerry Buss said, you know, that would look nice on the ball. Sure, hire him. And the rest is history. NBA commissioner, that's been your job title for 25 years. Why do you feel that your career is stalled like this? You get to a point where you can't do anything else when you have one job too long. And basically, I'm right. hardcore unemployable outside of the NBA. The NBA PA certifies agents to keep the players from being taken advantage of. Don't you think that should also be done with groupies? <laughs> yes. Certified groupies. Certified groupies, that's correct. I agree with that. I think we've really hit on something No, here. I, I'll talk to the union about that. Maybe we'll do it in our next round of the collective bargaining. I am bargaining. so excited. There's been kind of an alarming decline in black players in professional baseball, which has led the MLB to promote baseball to inner city youth. Do you ever think about doing the same thing for America's white kids? That NBA ball that you came out with a few years ago, I gotta say, I played with that ball two nights at my game, and I couldn't miss. Yeah. Is there any way you could sneak that back in? You got it. I can give it to you for your game. We have plenty of them. We have thousands of them. I in bet. Fact, they're on sale right here in the NBA store. I don't think I lacerated my hands more than two or three times. On it's, it. it hardens up. It's just a flesh wound. Do you see a day when maybe the teams would sell their naming rights, like you, the, the Sacramento Googles or the Miami Sunshine Assisted Livings? Mm, absolutely not uh, based upon the current marketplace. But let me know when you get close to our price. Okay. So there's hope there. Not really, but you know, we never say never to the NBA. I have one more question. Ask away. Um, I believe that your first national TV appearance was on ABC Sports Beat with Howard Cosell. Is that true? That's probably true. I believe the producer on that segment was me. I mean, in a way, I, I kind of have made... Launched my career. I launched your career. I want to use this occasion to thank you. I thought it was Howard Cosell, but now I know it was you. <laughs>